remain in the presence of the Lord. And let's put it to heart, the lyrics of that song that we have been singing. And let it be our prayer. Amen. Let's be in the presence of the Lord. Let's lift our hands to God. And let this be our prayer. Lord, we give you our heart. We give you our soul. I'll sing it. Lord, we gave you our heart. We gave you our soul. We live for you alone. Every breath that we take, every moment that we're awake, Lord, have your way in us. Lord, we gave you our heart. We gave you our soul. We live for you alone. Every breath that we take, every moment that we're awake, Lord, have your way in us. Yes, Father God, have your way in us. And Lord, we just want to take this wonderful opportunity and privilege, O God, that even in your words, that even studying in your words, O Lord, that we may lift it up unto you as an offering, Father God. Lord, we pray by faith that you open each and every heart, Open each and every mind, each and every soul, and each and every spirit, Father God. Open the floodgates of your heaven so that you can pour out and release abundantly everything it is in your words that your people needs, O Lord, this afternoon. Yes, Father God, through hearing and hearing your words, that our faith will grow. But Father, hearing and hearing those promises as well comes with an assurance, Father God, that as we seek your kingdom and your righteousness first, Lord, that all these things will be given and added unto us. And we are no exception this afternoon. My dear brothers and sisters, Father God, are no exception this afternoon, O Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us sit down. It comes naturally if you sing it. I was struggling to... <laughs> <laughs> to remember those words that once you sing it, it comes naturally. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Just a brief and a wonderful and a powerful testimony. Um, the Lord has uh, allowed us and few of um, our brothers and sisters, especially from the music team, were able to uh, go to Wembley yesterday. And um, uh, we were able to praise and worship the Lord in the presence of thousands of uh, believers led by no other than uh, Sinach and her friends herself. Amen. Uh, Wembley Ovo Arena, according to Marian, has a capacity of at least 12,500. And uh, if we consider some of the few chairs that were not occupied, we could probably reconcile people around 11,000. Yeah? So just imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, 11,000 people all praising and worshiping together, dancing together, jumping together. I mean, if you imagine an arena, it should be unstable, it should be a firm place. But uh, once 
People are worshiping in one heart. People are stomping in one heart. Um, uh, jumping together. <sighs> Ubu Arena is shaking. Amen? You enjoy that, boys? Even our boys here are, uh, are jumping and they are dancing for the Lord. So, uh, yeah, it's really very blessed. Um, uh, dear brothers and sisters, if you have videos of them, then just please uh, share it so that the church can um, uh, see and just for the church to be blessed as well. Amen? Hallelujah. And I thank the, word, the Lord for His words. And uh, I heard uh, the Lord through Pat Patricia saying today that coming afresh, Come afresh, yeah? Yeah? Uh, I don't know if you remember that. If you don't, then it's the Holy Spirit uh, uh, talking, at, uh, fully taking over. And, but yeah, Patricia talked about coming afresh. And that is the title of our message today, Come Afresh. Amen? So thank you for the Lord, for uh, the parallelity of His words. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, we are starting this new year, this new eighth year, like what we have said last time in a series, or we're entering into a period of breakthrough. And the first installment of that is coming afresh, or come afresh. Amen, church? In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19, the word of the Lord through Isaiah says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. This is what the message of the Lord through Patricia earlier. That for us to come afresh, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Amen. So the Lord said, See, I am doing a new thing. It has started already. Amen, church. We are not waiting when that new thing is going to come. We are not waiting or praying when that new thing is about to be unfold. The word of the Lord says, I am doing a new thing. Amen. Amen. It has started already. Amen, church. Amen. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen, church? So once again, before we begin, I just want to, with fullness and with a joyful heart, I want to express and greet each and every one a blessed seventh year. Amen, church? So really, because our seventh year uh, by day is in between last week and this week. Amen? So when we celebrated our seventh uh, year anniversary last Sunday, we celebrated a few days earlier. Amen? But uh, yes, I just want to... Uh, uh, can we pre please greet each and every one? A blessed seventh year anniversary. I think we all deserve it. We all deserve it. Amen, church? A blessed seventh year anniversary and to other brothers and sisters who are not with us here this afternoon, a blessed seventh year anniversary. Amen, church? Amen. Amen? So it's not a hangover. It's not an after effect. We are still on that mode of celebration. Amen, church? A blessed seventh year anniversary. Amen? And although it is very good to celebrate, it is very good to have that joy and merrymake to celebrate that seventh year anniversary. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate that seventh year anniversary, we should be conscious as well that as we celebrate that seventh year anniversary concomitantly or immediately or alongside it, we are stepping into our eighth years. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Surely we cannot be stuck celebrating. Amen. We cannot stop celebrating. We need to step into our eighth year anniversary. 
Amen? Or our, the, the start of our eighth year. Amen, church? Amen? So this is where this message is coming from. That although it is very good to celebrate, it is very good to come with a joyful heart, we come and merry make, because the Lord has allowed us that seventh year. But my dear brothers and sisters, we need to be consciously step into our eighth year as well. So this is where the word of the Lord says, Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, because I am doing a brand new thing already. Amen, church? Amen. I have started. I have put things into motion already. Amen. Amen. So really, my dear brothers and sisters, if we contemplate many of things that had happened, in the last year, and sometimes we are probably still stuck in that spot where, Lord, what are the reasons of those things happening? Father God, why did you allow those things happening? My dear brothers and sisters, as a believer, I believe that the Lord will not allow things to happen if He did not have any purpose. Amen, church. The Lord have allowed things to happen last year because of His purpose this year and over the coming years. All we need to do, my dear brothers and sisters, is trust in God. Trust in the Lord. Amen, church. So, my dear brothers and sisters, it is important for us to live in the now. Amen. Happy 7th year anniversary was yesterday. It is important for us to live in the now. Amen. It is important for us to look ahead for this 8th year coming. Amen. So when the word of the Lord says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. What is the Lord telling us? If you heard that word, that forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. What is the Lord telling us? The Lord is telling us, stop looking behind. Amen. Stop looking behind. Who are drivers here? Majority of you are drivers. Amen. Majority of you are drivers. Amen, church. And once you sit down on that driver's seat, and once that you started that engine and you start to drive, my dear brothers and sisters, what do you need to do? It is very good to check and look at your rear mirror from time to time. Amen? But you cannot keep on looking in it. Otherwise, before you get far, you already hit someone. You already had an accident. Amen. So you have to keep on looking on the front. Amen, church. It's good to keep on, it's good to stare in the rear mirror to look at what is happening, to apply it forward, my dear brothers and sisters, to apply it to learning. But you cannot be staring on that rear mirror. Otherwise, you will have an accident. Amen, church. So that's what the Lord is telling us as we embark on this eighth year, my dear brothers and sisters. Stop looking behind. Amen. When the Lord is saying, stop looking behind, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, the Lord is telling us, don't expect the past victories to sustain us. Amen, church. Amen. Don't expect the past victory, the past blessing to sustain us. Today has enough blessing for itself. Amen, church. You know, when the Lord led the people of Israel in the wilderness, and the Lord said that, I will provide manna from heaven for you. Amen, church. And 
the blessing of manna is brand new every morning. The people of Israel will wake up in that morning and they will find this manna in the ground. Yeah? If you look, if you like, the description of that manna is like a cotton-like, it's like rice, if you like. Amen, church? That the Lord God said that every morning, gather what you need for the day. Amen, church? To get by. People try to gather more, thinking to themselves that, oh, I will gather more because for tomorrow, for the next day, for Saturday. But when they wake up, they check what they have gathered for tomorrow. It's rotten. So that is what the Lord said that, am I not an, am I not an all-powerful God? I am providing my blessings, my provision is brand new every morning. Amen, church. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. What the Lord is saying is, whatever victory that you have allowed you to get by yesterday, do not dwell in them. Look in them like a side mirror to learn from them, but you cannot dwell in them because I have enough victory for tomorrow. Amen. And the other day to sustain you and the next day to sustain you. Amen, church. So when the Lord is saying, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. When the Lord is saying, stop looking behind, the Lord is telling us, do not expect the past victory to sustain you. Amen, church? Second, the Lord is also telling us that do not allow past failures to stop you, to keep you in place, to paralyze you. Amen, church. Amen. Not only that we do not live on the past blessing, but even the past failures, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So what if you fail today? In a few hour time, night time will come. Amen. And a new day will come. Amen. Amen. If I failed on a Monday, I'm not going to be a failure on a Tuesday, Amen. on a Wednesday, or on a Thursday, or on a Friday, or on a Saturday. Amen, church? Amen. Today has enough worries for today. Amen. But glory to God, I am waking up tomorrow morning. However, I mess up today. I'm waking up to a brand new morning tomorrow. Amen, church? So that's what the Lord is saying. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Amen, church? So what if you fail today? It's not too bad. There is a brand new morning tomorrow. Amen, church? Amen. Surely, that's the, what Hosea said. Isn't it? That's what we have been reading, the Hosea chapter 6. However long the night is, However the night will become, you cannot stop the sun to shine, to bring tomorrow. Amen. That's what we were learning on last Sunday. That's what Sister Michelle is teaching us. That the people of Israelites, no matter how deep they turn their back to the Lord, no matter how deep they frustrate the Lord, the moment that they come and cry and ask the Lord, you know, the Lord cannot say no. That is the nature of God. Amen, church. If that is you, someone is knocking in your door, pwede kang magbingi-bingihan. You can, uh, you can um, uh, pretend that you are deaf. You can pretend that you, that you cannot hear the person knocking in your door. But in the Lord, once you come and knock in the door of the Lord, that is His nature. Pagbubuksan ka niya, He will open it up for you. Amen, church? Amen. The Lord says, whoever that will come and knock 
it will be open for them. Amen. Whoever that will come in seek, they will find it. Whoever that will come in ask, it will be given to them. The question is not the Lord, it's us. Because we have not been knocking. We have not been seeking. We have not been searching. This is what Sister Michelle was teaching us last Friday about the nature of the Lord. Like, you know, however long the night is, however dark the night is, you cannot prevent the sun to come and shine. Amen. However long the winter is, however cold the winter becomes, you cannot stop the spring sunshine, the spring rain to come that will mark the end of the long winter. Amen. And vice versa. However nice, however sunny the summer is, you cannot prevent the coming of the first winter rain that symbolizes summer is over. Amen, church. The same thing with our failures. The same thing with our frustration. The same thing with our problem. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not keep on looking at that rear view mirror. You're about to hit someone. Amen. Do not look at the past. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Judges chapter 6, verse 13, in the conversation between the angel of the Lord in Gideon, where the people of Israel again turned their back to the Lord. You know, if you look at the history of Israel, they keep on turning their back to the Lord. I'm sure you are not worse than the people of Israel. Yes, you probably turn your back to the Lord 39 times. The people of Israel turn their back to the Lord 1,000 times. And they're, they're, they are still accepted. They are still the children of God. Amen, church. Amen. So, during that conversation, that this is the lesson that the angel, that the Lord gave to um, Gideon, because what Gideon said, pardon me, my Lord. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Were all his wonders that our ancestor told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord abandoned us and given us to the hand of Midian. My dear brothers and sisters, the people of Israel always looking back at their life in Egypt. How did the Lord deliver them out of the hand of Pharaoh? How the Lord did deliver them through that Red Sea? But they forget this very time that they are standing. Amen. How many of you? have been blessed by the Lord in the past. Amen. 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 Will you settle for that? Come afresh. Come afresh. The Lord has already started something greater and something new. Amen, church. Amen. All you need to do is let go of whatever it is that you are holding pertaining to the past so that you can actually grab hold of what the Lord is offering you right now. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. It's not our God is amazing God. Amen, church. Drivers, people of God, again, stop looking at that rear view mirror. You are going to have an accident. Amen. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. Amen. You know what I have learned in life? You know what I, the Lord have taught me in life? The past is a very good teacher. Amen. The past is a very good teacher. But the past is an awful place to live. 
Amen, church. If there is the purpose of the past for you is to minister learning, is to minister lesson, is to equip you. Amen, church. But you are not designed to live in the past. Amen. You are not designed to live in the past. Amen, church. People online, my dear brothers and sisters here in the church, I just want to preach to people here right now that you cannot hang on to your past failures. You cannot hang on to your past pain. So what if you are in pain today? Would you allow yourself to be in pain tomorrow? If you fail today, would you allow yourself to still be a failure tomorrow? Because if you do that, then you negate the power of God. Amen, church? Then your failure, your pain, your frustration, your struggle is stronger than the God. I thought God is the most strongest. I thought God, it says in there, is the source of joy and the source of peace. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, I'm preaching to somebody today. People online, people who are here. Let us quick to separate from those frustrations from those failures. Amen, church. Our battle is not against flesh or blood, but against spirit, against principalities, against demonic forces in heavenly places. Amen, church. Are you struggling financially? Maybe what you are praying to God is, Lord, Give me a better job. Lord, give me another overtime. Lord, give, allow someone to bless me in kind monetarily. But the, Lord, the word of the Lord says, the Lord has given you power and authority to, to pray for your situation. Amen. Looking back, when the mother-in-law of Peter was sick, was ill of fever. What did the Lord did? The Lord came and rebuked the spirit of fever. Amen. And the manifestation of fever went away. Maybe that's what we need to do. Rebuke the spirit of poverty. Rebuke the spirit of oppression. Rebuke the spirit of sickness, the spirit of illness. Rebuke the spirit of frustration and the actual manifestation will run away. Because that's what the Lord said. Our battle is not against the natural, it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against the spirit. Amen, church. So in every pain and sickness and illness, there is a spirit driving that. And every frustration, there is a spirit driving that. Amen, church? So begin praying. Begin praying. Amen. If you call on your leaders, if you call on your pastor, and hmm, they are so busy, the Lord gave you the same power and authority to pray for your situation. Amen, church? Because it's not your pastor. It's not your leader. You're going to be praying that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. So, again, I'm preaching to someone, to few, to people today, to the church today. Whatever past frustration, whatever frustration of last year, whatever pains, struggle, difficulty, problems, trials that you have had to endure last year. 
It's time to unlock. It's time to let go. It's time to separate. Amen, church. The word of the Lord says, run away from this temptation. Amen. I say, tukso layuan mo ako. No, the Lord said, run away from them. Do not ask the problem, tri frustration, trial to go away from you. It's the word of the Lord said, you are the one to run away from them. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If we live in the past, we will never embrace the future that God has for us. Amen, church. If we continue to live in the past, we will not embrace the future that God has in store for us. Amen. Your ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend is there. Keep on telling you, come on. Come. And you are in the middle. How can you reach your new lover if you keep on trying to reach the hand of the ex? The same thing with God. Amen, church. We are the bride. We were once the bride of the world. The world was once our groom. But now, the Lord said again, like Hosea, you know, Hosea was a perfect man to preach against the nation of Israel because Hosea was cheated on by his wife few times. And still, Hosea accepted the wife back. The wife begot children from other men. But still, Hosea accepted the wife back. That is what the love of the Lord for us. That when we accept the Lord and we were betrothed in marriage to the Lord, we became the bride and the Lord is the groom. But what do we do? We still enter into that adulterous relationship with our former husband, the world, with sin. <coughs> this is where the Lord is saying, forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. Come to your future. Amen, church. You know, Vicar Alwin stood in here and prophesied. And he said that the reason that you are not getting breakthrough because you are still stuck into that idol form of worship. My dear brothers and sisters, if you ask me, I understand. I understand. But basing on the word of the Lord, the Lord said, separate from those. Amen. Separate from those form of idolatry. Separate from those form of pictures. Separate from those form of figures. Once you are born again in Christ, yun yung mga unang you separate yourself from. Amen. Because Christ is more than enough. Christ is more than enough. Although, up until last time, Alwin said, did somebody came to you yet? And said, said, no, I don't, but I believe that it's not only a one person because that is the nature of the Filipinos. Amen. I had a cousin, or me and Marianne had a cousin, that even after being delivered, even after converting so Christianity, even after saying that they were born again, it took years and years for them to separate from those idols. And that's the reality of life. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past so that you can step into that future that the Lord prepares for you. 
Amen, church. Who is higher and greater, the Lord or us? Amen. Then, let's surrender to the Lord our future. Amen, church. Let us not rely on our own strength. Let us not rely on our own capability. Let us not rely on our own scheme and technique. Amen, church. Let us not hold the plate and say, Lord, give me this, this, and that. No, give the plate to the Lord. And let the Lord fill that plate. Amen, church. Hallelujah. So the question that I want us to ask today is, what is God saying to us today? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. What is actually what the Lord is telling us today? 2 Corinthians 5.17 That is the building block of the life of a believer. Amen. Who are Christians in here? I'm even gonna close my eyes because I... Who are Christians in here? Amen. Amen. The Christians, can they raise their hands? Who are Christians in here? Amen. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says to a Christian is, Therefore, if anyone who is in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. Your old things has passed away because the new has come. Amen, church. This is the gospel truth. This is the heart of the gospel when it comes to a believer. Amen? So with this, my dear brothers and sisters, our former life, our previous life, our past failures, our brokenness, our pain, they no longer define us. Amen, church? They no longer condemn us. They no longer rule over us. Amen, church? It should no longer dictate our daily decisions. Amen? Amen? Amen. So when you say a brand new creation, what comes with a brand new creation, my dear brothers and sisters? No, the brand new spirit. That's what make us a brand new creation. That was, that's what make us a born again. Because we are born in the spirit. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we pray to the Lord na uh, magkaroon that we will have uh, uh, another water baptism? I believe that uh, we have uh, new potential candidates for water baptism. Let's pray and let's desire for the Lord to answer that. Amen, church? Because that is the next step in faith. Water baptism. Amen, church? So my dear brothers and sisters, how many of us in here is willing to pray with me? Let's pray for the word of the Lord in Psalm chapter 51, verse 10 and 12. What is that at our one of our favorite song? Create in me a clean heart, O God. Amen, church. And renew a right spirit within me. Amen, church. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Amen. Amen. And give me a willing heart. Yep. Amen, church. Amen. Let us pray how many of us in here that would want to take that burden and initiative. People who are praying there in a Sunday, 12.30, let's pray for that. That Lord, create in me Create in my brothers, in my sisters, create upon your people a clean heart. Amen. And renew a right spirit within us. That you restore unto us 
the joy of our salvation. Amen, church? That's what we need. If we are to be ushered into a breakthrough, if we are to be ushered into a breakthrough that will lead to a revival, that's what we need. It should come from a clean heart, bearing a right new spirit. Amen, church? It must come from a willing heart, from a willing spirit. Amen, church? In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, that do not dwell in the past. Forget the former things. What is the Lord telling us? No? When the Lord said in here, I am doing a new thing, and now it is springing up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way, a way in the wilderness. And stream in the waistline. You know what I see in there is the Lord has already started into motion. But what the Lord is asking from us is to perceive it. Amen, church. To perceive it. Because even the Lord has already started. Even the Lord's work is already in its speak. If we are not perceiving it, my dear brothers and sisters, it will have no effect on us. Amen, church. So let us not just simply and merely sit down in there and hang around, my dear brothers and sisters. When we say that 2 Corinthians 5.17 we do not just simply, it just should not just simply come to us as a word of encouragement, as a word from the Bible. What should we do? We should start leaving it. Amen. The failure comes, we need to start perceiving it. We need to start seeing it. Because the failure comes is we sit down in the church Sunday in and Sunday out and waiting for this brand new thing. But the Lord has already started it. Amen, church. What do we need to do is to live it, to act in it. Then we will see. Amen, church. Amen. That is what faith do not wait for the evidence before you act. Faith is you act first and then you will see the evidence. Amen, church. So when the Lord said, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, and then the Lord follows it and said that, I am doing a brand new thing. Can you not perceive it? So what the Lord is telling us is we need to start looking ahead. Amen, church? We need to start looking ahead because God has already brought newness. The Lord has already started it. We need to anticipate. We need to expect. Amen, church? We need to start Leaving it out. Amen. Amen. So my encouragement to us today, and not just an encouragement, a reminder and warning at the same time. Amen. Listen to this. That while we look forward to the new things of God, but I caution us all not to make an idol out of the new. Amen, church. In as much as we are anticipating and we are expecting for this brand new thing, that for us not to make an idol out of the new. Amen. That's the reason why that what was our agreement yesterday when we were going to um, uh, 
to, uh, to Wembley. We are not going there because of Sinach. We're going there to praise and worship the Lord in the assembly of the congregation. Yes, Sinach is probably leading that worship, but she is not the reason. She is not the purpose that we will go there. Amen, church. Amen. You know this online thing that is happening to us? You know this opportunity and privilege that we can put a technology in our service and we can, um, uh, we can uh, catch everything that we are doing in video? This is a brand new thing. And it is very good because the reach of the church, the ministry, the service is widening and expanding. But people online... I caution you that this should not be an alternative to actually going to the church. Amen. This should not be a replacement of actually coming face to face in natural with the fellowship. Amen, church. Because that's how the Lord designed the body. Attachment sinew by sinew, bone by bone, ligament by ligament, muscle by muscle, tendon by tendon. Amen, church. Amen. It's good that we have the opportunity and privilege to enjoy the service at the comfort of our own home. But it should not be a replacement. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. I mean, last Friday alone, I spoke to the youth that, oh, youth, it's very good that from a young age, corporately, the ministry as a church welcomed you, encouraged you to take part, to come and stand in the altar and worship and serve the Lord. Because we know that as a young children, as a youth, according to the Word of God, your hearts are pure. You have no other interest, you have no other purpose in coming to the Lord. The Lord has gifted you talent and skills. It is proper and appropriate to give that and bring that to God. Amen, church? But what was the difference then and now? After a few years, you are now approaching that age of responsibility. Amen, church? You are now approaching that age of responsibility. So therefore, that means that standing and serving to the Lord should come at your merit. What does that mean, my dear brothers and sisters? We are encouraging them to have that personal accountability to start seeking the Lord to start living for the Lord. Amen, church? That's what a brand new thing is. Amen? So again, children, once again, be encouraged. And I hope and pray that your experience yesterday is not just while you sit and see what's happening in there, there, there is that urge sa kanila. Oh, we, there's that urge to go and play. Amen? But we pray that more than that urge that they will grow is spiritually as well. Because I agree, you know, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard what these children can do through God. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we end, I just want to borrow the life story of the Israelites that it will be applied to us all. You know, the Israelites, they were called by the Lord out of Egypt. They were called upon miracles in miracles. But the plan of the Lord is more than to bring the people out of Egypt, more than to pass the people out of miracles in miracles. The plan of the Lord is bring them to the promised land. Amen. To bring them to the promised land. Church, the plan of the Lord is more than 
reach the seven years, have a mighty and glorious celebration, and that's it. No. We have an eight year ahead of us. Amen, church. What is needed for the people of Israel from coming out of the Red Sea to reach the promised land? It's the vast desert. Amen. With the heat, with the challenges, with the trials and tribulation in that wilderness. Amen, church. The Lord got that covered. The Lord got that covered. The Lord even delivered kingdoms in kingdoms in their hand. But what the Lord is asking for the people of Israel that failed them is their obedience. Amen, church. Our seventh year stopped here. We are going to that eighth year. There is going to be challenges, Tell, believe me. The challenges that we have experienced the past year, there will be greater challenges crossing that eighth year. But the Lord has that covered. What the Lord is asking for us is our obedience. Is our obedience. Amen? And like one of you said earlier, I believe it's Patricia again who said earlier, that this is not a one-person task. It is a task for the people. Amen. Moses. It was not only a task for Moses to cross that to the promised land. It's for the, all the nation of Israel to get to the promised land. So my dear brothers and sisters, with this, I invite once again a renewed invitation from this pulpit. Let us be. This is a family thing. Seer is a family, right? Is that not what we are fond of saying? That we are a seer family? Amen? So, if you are more comfortable with that, then let's say, okay, this is a family thing. Amen? We have that wilderness to cross. Amen? We have that wilderness to cross. You know what happened in that 40 years in the wilderness? Remind me. That is where the greatest struggle and trials that Israel has to experience. Amen? Amen? Did you agree with me? That the trouble from that to, to uh, the promised land was the greatest struggle and trials that Israel has ever experienced. Amen, church? But let us not forget that is where they most experience the power of God as well. Amen. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Yes, bring it on eight years. All the struggle and all the trial, if not even the seventh year, all those seven years, bring it on. As long as we have the agreement between us that hand in hand, together as a family, we will continue to obey the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. 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 The enemy has a plan. Amen. The enemy has a plan. And the enemy know that we know that he has a plan. Amen, church. But what the enemy does not know is what the Lord intends to do for that. Amen, church. Our advantage is we know that the Lord has something to do for that. Amen, Amen church. Amen. So with this, my dear brothers and sisters, as I greet each and every one again, a blessed seventh year anniversary with excitement, let's look forward for this eighth year. Let's look forward for this year of breakthrough. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Let's look forward for this year of breakthrough. You know, I do not stand lightly in here. That I do not want to stand again the same time eight year, next year and we can look forward that there's no breakthrough coming because if that God did not lie, we did not do our part. Amen, church. Again, 
Blessed seventh year anniversary and welcome eight years. Next week, we'll continue our series on breaking through. And yeah, there's still half will stick on this passage next week. Amen, church. Hallelujah. As it is our first Sunday, can I invite each and everyone to stand up? Uh, can I please call Sister Alma and uh, John, would you please come and um, let me usher you yung kwan? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Let's welcome the music team as well. Or Gab, yeah, yeah, come Gab. Praise you, Lord Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, my prayer as we prepare ourselves to partake of this communion, because the word of the Lord says that if we do not self-judge ourselves, then we put ourselves to failure. If we take, if we partake of the communion of the Lord in a wrong manner, then we subject ourselves to failure. So again with this, let's just pray that prayer once again, that Lord, as we partake of this communion, in prayer, we just want to say, Lord, we gave you our heart. We gave you our soul, Father God. We live for you alone. And every breath that we take, we will do it for you. Father, thank you for the life of my dear sister Alma and my dear brother John. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful opportunity and privilege bestowed upon them to usher these elements with us. Lord, give them a clean hands and give them a right spirit. And Father, that uh, just as they um, distribute these elements to your people, it's as if we are receiving them directly from you. And Father, we entrust unto you these elements, this bread that symbolizes your body and this drink that symbolizes your blood. Cleanse them sanctify them and bless them in the raw form. Let it be that will serve us the purpose that you intend for us this afternoon. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. God of second chances. Thank you that you are the God of brand new opportunities. And Father, thank you for proving to us once again today that you love us so dearly. If we are to rely on our own emotions, if we are to rely on our own interpretation of things we want to remain where we are we want to stuck in the middle of our frustrations in the middle of our trials and failures and problems we want to dwell in the success and victory of the past because that seems to us as a proof that we are in a right situation but Lord thank you Thank you that you're telling us to come out from it. To come out from the victory of the past. To step out from the failures of the past. Because you are offering a much brighter and a much wonderful future in your son Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful privilege 
to partake of your body, O Jesus, and your blood that was shed out in that cross of Calvary. Let it be unto us the seal that bear who we are in you. Let's lift up the bread. For I receive from the Lord that I also pass on to you. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, all of you, in memory of me. Let us eat the bread. Let's lift up the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in memory of me. For whenever you take this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink the cup. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can we please bring in the music team? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Tell your brother, tell your sister next to you, do not dwell on the past. Hallelujah. Do not dwell on the past. Forget the former things. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, whatever heaviness, whatever burden, it's time to disengage and separate from them. Amen. It's time to let go. It's time to let go. It's time to listen to the Lord saying, Stop looking behind. Amen, church. Stop looking behind and start looking ahead. Let's worship the Lord, church.
reach to your situation last year. Tell your situation last year, I want a new deal. I want a new deal in the Lord.
As a sign of victory. The Lord says, our battle is not against flesh or blood, but against spirit, against principalities, against demonic forces and heavenly places. My dear brothers and sisters, can I invite each and every one of us a declaration of faith in the spirit. The Lord has already made us victorious. The reason that the Lord climbed on the tree 2,000 years ago, gave His life, is in order for us to have a victory right now. My dear brothers and sisters, can I invite each and every one of us things that are stalling you right now. All those things that the enemy is using to kill, to steal, and to destroy your joy and your good relationship and standing with the Lord right now. Whatever those problems, Whatever those problems, they are represented with spirit. So be honest to yourself. Whatever those problems that are in need of breakthrough right now, in as much as you remember them in your mind, in as much as you recognize them to begin with, recognize whatever those problems right now. And I want you to Hold them in your hand, ready to snap them into, in the spirit. Whatever those problems, relationship, finances, your health, your parents, your children, your brothers, your sisters, your spouse, work, friends, colleagues, even your pastor. Whatever it is that you cannot let go and release, whatever it is that you have seen that you cannot let go and release, I want you to hold them in your very hand right now and prepare to snatch them break them and shatter them into pieces because I believe that's what the Lord is telling us right now 
to forget the former things to not to dwell in the past these things reached into them and said that burden problem predicaments I'm sorry but you cannot move forward with me right here right now in this place in the presence of my God I'm breaking up with you I'm snatching you up I'm breaking you as a twig in my hand I'm crushing you in your in pieces because I cannot step in to a wonderful future that God has in for me if you continue to remain in my baggage. And three, two, one. Come on, somebody snatch those problems right now. Hallelujah. 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 Indeed, O oh God. Indeed, Lord. Indeed, O oh Jesus. Thank you for enabling me victory. Thank you for enabling me victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah right now. Once more, can we sing that song? From the beginning. But the difference this moment is, we are singing it in a position of being freed. Amen. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. Church, the way sing it with your music team in celebration. The one go back, Lord, to the way I used to be before you rescued me. Come on, musician, sing. The one go back, Lord, to the way.
Hallelujah. Let me pray for the church. Lord, thank you that it is no longer in a position of dwelling in the past. That it is no longer in a position of living on the former self. But Father, thank you that you have stood us in a position of arising with you. Father, thank you very much that you are gonna continually help us preserve that fire in us, Lord. Thank you so much, Father, that the brand new fire that we have received today is more than enough, Lord to settle for what is to come that we do not need to look back in yesterday 
or in yester months or in yester years because Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 said we are looking up forward focusing unto Jesus the author the finisher the perfecter but most importantly the future of our faith thank you very much thank you very much Lord thank you that every chains every shackles represented in whatever problems predicaments trials frustration depression tribulations has been broken today has been broken today father god so thank you very much lord because having been those things being broken you have made us arise father god free arise free so my dear brothers and sisters go not only to live in peace not only to serve the lord but freed amen you are freed you are freed again by faith you do not have to wait and look and seek for the sign live it and the sign will be manifested thank you so much father god thank you so much oh jesus thank you for the victory thank you for the life of each and everyone thank you for the wonderful opportunity and privilege to gather together but most importantly thank you lord that you even allow us to honor and worship you today and may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship and the company of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen 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 go in peace my dear brothers and sisters go in peace amen yes my dear brothers and sisters next week we do not have a use of this worship place so uh, if there is no uh, other alternative plan to be uh, put forward we are hoping to do an outdoor fellowship amen where is that place remind me um Frimley Lodge Park is that park or a farm Frimley Lodge Park it's Primly Lodge Park. So, uh, yeah. Amen, church. If we do not have place indoors, then let us the Lord to open a place outdoors for us. Okay? May God bless us all. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus.